All right, folks, we are back on Kincaid Lake. Small fish right here to start the day off, but I'm excited to say that we are on Kincaid today. We're gonna do uh, some shooting and it's, I can't wait because I haven't been here in a long time. Uh, haven't been here all summer, to be honest with you. Just been really a busy, busy stump summer. So uh, I, it's just a beautiful lake. If you haven't been to Kincaid Lake, go to Murfreesboro, Illinois. Um, it's just an incredible, incredible fishery um, I'll talk about it a lot in this episode but for right now this is a good little start thanks again thanks for watching three pound fishing partnered up with these fantastic companies hey folks thanks for joining me please subscribe if you like this type of content today we're going to be talking about strategies and live scope okay it's not just about having the equipment but are you, what are the little things that you're doing that are helping you catch more fish. Now, today we are on Kincaid. I think this is the best looking lake in Southern Illinois. It's incredible. So if you have the opportunity, check out Kincaid Lake located in Murfreesboro, Illinois. We've got this storm that's rolling around us right now. It's probably why there's no boats on the lake. Perhaps I should look at my, uh, my weather app, but I didn't. So hopefully it stays away, and if it is, if it does come through, maybe it'll be quick, quick and easy. But it's all right there. So no boats in the parking lot usually is a bad sign. Start off with a, a loop knot again. Line goes to the eyelet, twirl around about five times, and then right back through that loop you just made and. It's not the most accurate loop knot, but that's okay. Loaded it up with some Jinko baits, tickle fry, check them out, I love them. Number five, split shot. Of course, the three pound fishing rod right there. Check it out at ozarkrod.com. So let's catch some fish. You know, before I before I came to this lake today, I did call a couple of friends and I said, "What's this? What's the reporting on Kincaid right now?" And it's small fish, so we're gonna try to change that. Obviously, our goal is to get some big slabs in this boat. We're gonna try out that cooler, that oxygen cooler today. Gonna see if it's working. Kind of make sure we know what the setting should be on it. That's our goal: is to put about 10 fish in there and then let it sit there all day and see what the outcome is. It's been good so far, so. That's a bigger fish. Boy, he moves slow to it. Yep. That's what I'm talking about right there, folks. That fish is sitting on top of that log. That's a solid 12-inch fish anyway. That's a great fish. That's an Egypt white. Or I'm sorry, a Kincaid white. <laughs> so used to fish in my home lake. That's a Kincaid White, beautiful fish right there. We're gonna put that one in the cooler. That's gonna be the start of our, our little test. And that's the first good fish. Awesome. They need to get bigger, but still, solid fish. Solid fish. It's interesting you got the thunder rolling all around this and uh got the sun big time right there you got these clouds wanting to come in so all i'm doing is letting that thing is that bait just drop right above their heads i'm letting it come right over them there was a hit I use that split shot as kind of a visual on the screen. That helps out a lot. You can't just have your bait on there, in my opinion. You need something else to follow. That bait sometimes covered up by the fish. And so you use that weight as kind of your sight. 
And if that weight moves, you know the fish has got it. I mean, obviously I'm still looking at my jig if I can. Only a couple big ones left in here. We're seeing if we can get them. At least get one. One of them hit it. So I'm gonna downsize just a little bit. This is fun, I love it, man. This is awesome. That's the big fish right there. That's the big fish I just saw on there. Look at that guy, good fish. Changed the entire presentation to a small hair jig and he bit it. He would not bite. That's another 12 inch fish, solid white. Great, great story of changing your bait and how it looks, the presentation. So the paddle tail wasn't working. You go back it up now with a hair jig instead, something that's doing a little something different and it made him move right towards it, chomped it. I also changed, just the other thing I didn't, I didn't talk about really is I changed to the 12 footer so that I didn't have, because of a hair jig, I don't, I don't really necessarily like to swim a hair jig. Um, I like it to drop down vertically on them. It's not meant to be swam, although you can do it of course. But by with the, bringing out the 12 footer, I was able to just get right on top of it and bring it right down to it. So a great example of why you would want maybe a shorter rod, 10 or 11, and then have a 12 or 13 in your boat. What you need to do to change it up when you're out here with live scope. You can have the live scope, you can have all the stuff, but you need to learn how to swim and change it up for the fish. I mean, react to how the fish, ch change what you're doing based on what they're doing. If they're not reacting and going after it right away, or maybe they're just looking at it, then backing off, change something about your bait. That's the big thing. People ask about my line a lot. So this is a uh, six pound, and right now I'm using fluorocarbon. So definitely a great point. You can have the technology, but you definitely have to put the time in. And how those fish are reacting to your bait, pay attention because you are definitely gonna need to change it up to get the bites that you want. Big fish here, another dandy. Same thing, didn't change anything, kept the bait. Might have found the bite, bait they like. Maybe not the biggest fish in the world. Only maybe an 11, 11 and a half, but still a great fish right now, I think. problem there is that that was one of the bigger marks so we know what we're dealing with here I'd like to know how many of you guys have tried out the new three pound fishing rods comment below all the reviews have been awesome so far There's a good fish. So on Kincaid, they have four types of crappie, a hybrid, a white, a black, and then of course the black nose. So when you come out to Kincaid, um, everybody's trying to, well, at least I am, it's kind of fun, just try to hit for the cycle. So we have a white, and now we have a black. You can uh, distinguish those hybrids by just the vertical barring and the black speckle kind of mix in together. Or you can look for, I believe it's seven spines for the hybrid over here at Kincaid. But that's a beautiful fish right there. It's about 11 and a half. It's going in the uh, cooler for our test. These fish are going to be released after 
I verify the cooler works and uh, beautiful fish. Another good strategy for a live scope, and I, and I always forget about this, I do it a lot during the guide trips where rather than re-dropping in on a fish, a lot of times you can maneuver your, your uh, trolling motor to put you right over the fish. So if the fish aren't getting spooky, rather than me picking up and re-dropping and possibly spooking them, I'll just maneuver the trolling motor while my bait's still down there and drive it into the fish. Especially, I mean, obviously only if it's on a really good line. Like I can tell it's at the right height. I can tell that there's not gonna have to do much to do it. That's a good fish. I hope that's a crappie. Look great on the, on the oh, it's your black nose. All right, great fish. It was really low, and that, we've got three of the four now. Look at that black nose. Gosh, look at that. Beautiful. See the black nose right there? Very aggressive fish. Very aggressive fish. That is pretty. So now we have three of the four fish. we got to get a hybrid now. That's awesome. Beautiful fish. Here's the, here's the uh, cooler right here. I don't know if I've released that video yet or not of the making of this cooler, but it's basically a Walmart grizzly bear, a lifetime Walmart cooler. Uh, I've got a oxygen tank. I bought it one of these uh, Pax Airs, I believe it's called, a pedi pediatric regulator tubing that runs to a micro bubbler down inside there. It's a very expensive setup to be very honest with you. But it's gonna, I'm gonna have it for my lifetime. It's, I've only had to purchase it once and use it in the summertime. So it's a, well, we'll see if it works. That's the key, right? That is the key, so. So you might ask me, why am I using a gray rod? I'll tell you why. Cause I still got them. And I like the gray rod. I do like the three pound fishing 10 footer. I like the gray rod and the three pound fishing rod is essentially the same. So it's got the same feel, uh, just a cooler color. Where's it at? Right here. So our 10 footers are totally based off of the gray footer. It's the same thing basically with just a different color scheme. Now when you go to 11, 12, um, 13, they stiffen up. Um, and that stiffness is put in a specific location on the rod to help you with your hook sets. Something that I think really makes those rods special. So, but I have some tip footers still. Obviously I still have the gray ones. I didn't just get rid of them. So from time to time, you'll see them in the boat. You know, another good tip for strategy for live scoping is always put your, your nose of your boat into the wind. That gives you a lot more boat control. But you guys knew that already. All right, folks, that's going to end it. Hey, uh, do me a favor. Uh, if you haven't been to my Facebook page or my Instagram, you can do that. I post daily on those pages. Even if you share a photo with your three pound fishing rod, I'll post it there. You'll get to check them out. Uh, a lot of great reviews and I appreciate you guys watching. At the end of this video, stay till after the outro and I'll show you how well those fish do being on the lake all day in that setup. So stay tuned. I'm about to show you that. Thanks for watching another three pound fishing episode sponsored by these great companies. All right, for those that stayed to the end, I appreciate it. This is where we're gonna get to test the, the cooler and find out if it's working. First and foremost, lots of bubbles. Check this out, weird. Water is cool to the touch though. definitely some life in there all right fish number one fish number one is definitely alive going back in the water fish number two definitely alive 
This is after about five hours in here. Definitely alive. Definitely. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Not alive. 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 So it looks like we had one, one death. I don't understand why we would have one death. 